from iconic one-liners I'd buy that for a dollar to memorable locations and everyone's favorite nuclear-themed board game. The recently released Robocop Rogue City is chock full of Easter eggs and references to Robo films of the past. Here's everything we found so far. Before his Robocop days, Alex Murphy had it all. A lovely smile, a great job, and even greater co-workers. Unfortunately for him, all of that literally gets blown away once Clarence Boddicker, the crime boss of the first film, introduces Alex to his gang <laughs> and the end of his Desert Eagle. We get to partially relive those horrifying moments with Rogue City offering up Alex Murphy's death scene as an explorable location. You too can now rummage through the dirt and grime of this steel mill, all while appreciating those finer details, from the busted TV that Murphy shot at to the chalk outline where his body once was. A morbid but must-see location for all fans. <laughs> Paul Verhoeven wasn't shy when it came to dishing out satirical commentary on the state of America, and despite Robocop taking place in the year 2043, it sure does look like 1980s Detroit, with the city clearly lacking in any sort of social or moral empathy. And Nukem is a humorous, yet somewhat sad representation of that. Now, invading other countries and threatening your children with nuclear destruction is an odd sell for a family board game. Pakistan is threatening my border! That's it, Buster. No more military aid! And while it's sadly not playable in Rogue City, you can see it being used by a bunch of crooks to store and sell the highly dangerous and appropriately named narcotic, Nuke. Nuke em. Get them before they get you. All right, hear me out on this one. A multi-billion dollar cyborg police officer is something I could absolutely buy into, but a refitted Barrett M82 equipped with a comically large scope, capable of entirely blowing up a store, and even Ed 209 in a single shot is a bit far-fetched. Can you imagine how different Call of Duty 4 would have been with this? It's now or never, take the shot. Thankfully though, this overpowered rifle, known as the Cobra Assault Cannon, can be used with maximum prejudice in the latest stretch of Rogue City's adventure. While only offering 15 rounds of explosive fun, its short screen time is certainly memorable, with this deadly cannon dishing out an absolute wallop of firepower. Whether you're a low-level crook or a sleazy crime boss, there's a lot of things out in Detroit that are itching to stop your questionable rising career choice. From the trigger-happy Ed 209 to the stoic Robocop, the odds are certainly stacked against you. Even stealing a parked car can shorten your life expectancy, which Robocop 2 shows with Magnavolt, the deadly automated security system that will fright anyone brave enough to hotwire a car. And while you can't see it directly in action when in-game, one of the references you can spot is the brightly lit logo of this lethal product off in the far distance when exploring downtown Detroit. Clarence J. Bodica is a ridiculous, yet brutal man. This is perfectly highlighted when Bobby, a member of Clarence's gang, is shot in the leg during Robocop's opening car chase. Instead of carefully tending to his poor pal, who's clearly in a lot of pain, Clarence instead asks, Can you fly, Bobby? Clarence, no! Liabilities like Bobby clearly aren't allowed, but Clarence must have had a soft spot for the poor criminal, as a lovely bit of graffiti memorializing the late great Bobby can be found within the city ruins of Rogue City, complete with angel wings as well. You just know that Bobby is looking down, proud of his lasting legacy. Robocop goes through a lot, facing not just one, but multiple failed OCP initiatives during Rogue City. You've got classics like Ed 209, as well as a visit from the aptly named Robocop 2. But during your playthrough, you'll have to go head-to-head -head against one of the more subtly terrifying creations of omni-consumer products. While they appear to be weak copycats of Murphy, hidden behind those steel masks are a haunting realization that you're killing something that's already died once. Don't remember what I'm talking about? Take a look at this. Colorful language seems to be commonplace among OCP employees, as well as Detroit crooks. The old man thought it was pretty important, Dick. With one line in particular standing out amongst the rest. 
Bitches leave. And while there's never been kinder words uttered on film, it's lovely to see some of that charm is retained within Robocop Rogue City. The now CEO of OCP, Max Becker, harkens back to that iconic line with his own poetic take on it. Now, you leave. Bitches, come! Said with as much enthusiasm as Captain America's, Come. It's fair to say that these two quotes can live side by side in notoriety. Robocop 3 did a lot of things, many of them questionable, such as turning Ed 209 into a loyal puppy, Peter Weller not returning, and even including robot ninjas. Thankfully, Rogue City doesn't include any of those, but it does feature a little reference to OCP's future, directly tying into Robocop 3. During its Fallout-esque ending slideshow, we get a brief glimpse of the Japanese chairman of Kanemitsu Corporation, who ultimately buys out Omni Consumer Products during the course of Robocop 3. Could this be a hint towards a sequel, or just a nice little reference? Time will tell, but to be honest, I wouldn't be opposed to Robocop having a jetpack in Rogue City. Okay, it might not have the factory sticker on it still or even the approval of an adorable stop-motion dinosaur, but the iconic American tradition featuring lovely reclining seats and great mileage, the 6000 SUX does make a brief appearance during a particular questline within Robocop Rogue City. As you'll patrol in Detroit, Sergeant Warren Reed tasks Robo with finding a stolen vehicle that just so happens to belong to the mayor's niece. Now, does this seem like an overreach of mayoral powers? Possibly, considering there's a cop killer on the loose, but it does lead to some interesting detective work and the utter destruction of a biker gang. Tax dollars well spent. We see Robocop struggle with flashbacks from his past life as police officer Alex Murphy in the movies, and these memories continue to haunt him in Rogue City. When Robocop catches a glimpse of his reflection in the TV screen, it's actually Alex Murphy that's staring back at him. Early on, after taking a bad fall, Robocop can hear his wife and son talking. Darling, could you get the napkins from the cupboard? Throughout the game, he suffers frequent malfunctions that put him in some sticky situations, which prompts OCP to conduct regular evaluations and monitor him using a chip. While searching for the torch heads, Robocop bumps into a teenager at the arcade who appears to be high on nuke. The teenager sees Robocop and refers to him as TJ Laser. Man, a real like TJ Laser? You are so incredibly shiny! Who is the character from a cop show that Alex Murphy's son, Jimmy, watches. In the first movie, we see Murphy practicing spinning his pistol like TJ Laser and telling Ann Lewis about the show when they first start working together. Pretty fancy moves, Murphy. Uh, yeah, well, my son Jimmy watches this cop show, DJ Laser, and this laser guy does this every time he takes down a bad guy, so naturally my, my kid thinks every good cop should be... And you don't want to disappoint? There are also a bunch of posters around Rogue City's Detroit advertising the show and it's playing in the cinema as well. There's also a fax from Baby Maid, which is a brand of baby food in the Robocop universe. The note, which can be found in the police station, outlines that Baby Maid wants Robocop to be the face of the brand in exchange for a supply of free baby food. Remember, Robocop doesn't eat regular food and instead gets everything he needs from an organic paste. So this sounds like a pretty sweet deal for him. In the first Robocop movie, Ann Lewis brings some baby food to the still mill for him to eat, and we also see him using the jars to calibrate his targeting system. That's dead on. The ads in Robocop seem to get progressively weirder as the movies go on, and one that'll stick in mind of fans is the TV spot for Sunblock 5000 in Robocop 2. Sunblock 5000. Just apply a pint to your body, and you're good for hours. Rogue City features an entire side quest filled with shady TV execs, murder, and lashings of this blue and green goop, which turns out to be just as dangerous as its side effects warn. Sunblock is the least of your worries. 
Rogue City's villain, Wendell Antonowski, may be referred to as the new guy, but this ain't the first time we've come toe to toe with an Antonowski. Wendell's brother, Emil, appeared in the first Robocop film as one of the gang members that killed Alex Murphy in a horrific scene that saw blood and body parts spewed across our TV screens. Emil meets a pretty gruesome fate of his own at the end of the movie when his skin melts off after he drives into a container of toxic waste. And his brother certainly hasn't forgotten what's happened. In Robocop, OCP had big plans for Detroit, and that entailed scrubbing the crime-infested streets of the old city off the map and creating a utopia known as Delta City. There are plenty of billboards advertising the rose-tinted future of the clean, crime-free city built for Detroit's future generations, but we all know that OCP's methods of achieving this dream are nefarious. Delta City for our children. Speaking of which, we see Ed 209 destroy a model of Delta City at the beginning of the first Robocop movie. However, it looks like OCP has forked out the cash for a new, not-so-bloody model by the time we reach the events of Rogue City, where it sits proudly in the boardroom once again. With Robocop 1 and 2, there's no shortage of memorable one-liners, most of which are lovingly referenced every time you unlock a trophy or achievement while progressing through Rogue City. Whether it's picking up an OCP skill disc, Buy that for a dollar. Or even finishing the game. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. There's always another hit of nostalgia just around the corner. For more on Robocop Rogue City, check out our game versus movie comparison video or our review. And for everything else, stick with IGN.